remote ID. Okay, let's get serious. Okay, remote ID, September 16th, 2023, will be reality for all of us in this wonderful hobby of RC planes. Okay, now you can throw blame at whoever you want. All them damn, all the old freaking drone people, they did it to us, you know, or they're drones, you know, and they're irresponsible, or it's them company. Okay, it does, you know, it's a reality. Okay, it's coming. Nothing you can do about it. All right? You need to chill out. Okay? You just need to relax. Okay? Um, remote ID basically has come about because of progress, okay? The reality is, you know, the Jetsons flying cars and things being transported by way of mold, that's gonna happen, okay? There will be flying cars. There will be portable devices that move people from back and forth. There will be un unarmed or unmanned aircraft that's gonna deliver goods to your house. It's gonna happen in your lifetime. It's gonna happen a lot sooner than you think. And at the end of the day, that has to be regulated, okay? It has to be regulated. Um, if Amazon wants to deliver your box of Skittles to your house that you ordered because you don't want to go to the grocery store and buy it and you want a case of Skittles and it needs to get to your house quickly, you're going to walk out one day, a little app's going to go off on your phone, a little ding, hey, your delivery's here, you're going to walk outside, and you're going to see your box sitting by your front door, and you're going to see this drone that looks about the size of a small Buick go flying away. Okay, that is the legal use of a drone by a company. That must be regulated. You have this 30 to 45 pound drone made of carbon and steel and, and plastics that's flying around. The FAA has to know what the heck that thing is. Or, better yet, you've got a patient in the hospital who needs a heart transplant and hours are a matter of essence. What if a drone could say the heck with that traffic jam that ambulance has to wait in? I can take, take that heart, I can deliver it to the hop at the top of the hospital and save that life. Okay, there's lots of wonderful potentials for drones and what they can do, okay? But there has to be regulation involved in that because just like with gun laws, it's going to affect the law by its citizens. People who don't obey the law don't care about regulations or government regulations anyways. So there has to be ramifications when things are used illegally. And there has to be a way of controlling that. So, because let's face it, unmanned highly maneuverable, highly effective aircraft are new to our lifetimes, okay? In the past 20 years, it's become a true reality. So for the FAA, this is a new thing. You know, all of a sudden we've got these little drones that are fitting the size of your hand and they're dropping drugs into a, to a prison. They're filming, you know, there's no lights on them and there's no sound to them because the new types of props and they're hovering over a football game that people paid $150 for their seats and people who are paying 50 bucks a month for a prescription, you know, to watch that football game. And this guy's up there with a high definition camera, 30 feet over people's heads and he's filming, or 100 feet over people's heads and he's filming the whole game in high definition or transmitting it. Well, that ain't right. It's not fair to those people. So there, ha and, and what happens when that drone gets out of control, you know? Okay, and it's not just drones. This could be done with fixed wing aircraft too. There could be problems with that by people who are not responsible. Okay, that is the scare tactics and the advantage tactics to for the government to promote this remote ID. Okay, but at the, bottom, at the end of the day, it's just the FAA wants to know what's flying around in our, our airspace and what's going to keep us safe. Okay, don't think so much. That's when my arms are stuck. Don't, don't freak out over it. Okay, it's going to be a commonplace thing. Okay, it's not going to kill our hobby. If anything else, it's going to add more respect to our, our hobby, especially those of us who are doing this legally. You know, them guys with their little drones down at the city park, and they got their FPV gear, and they're flying, they're all racing each other through the, through the gates. They're fine. Okay. 
uh, the grandfather with his airplane and his grandson down the park. And he's following AMA rules. And he's going to fly his little plane around and show his grandson. They're going to be fine. There's just simple things that they're going to have to follow to legally do this. The basic three things you've got to remember, and this is research, and this is what me getting from the FAA and me getting from a guy named Tim McKay. I will give a link to a video that he just put out that's just a few days updated, a few days ago. Um, today, I think it was the 15th or the 14th of July, okay? Just a few days old. He has the latest information. He is a commercial pilot. He does keep up with this. He, you know, spokesperson. He's got the real deal, and he'll explain all this in detail to you, and I'm going to put this a link to that video. I'm just trying to give it to you in real, normal terms to keep to try to uh, uh, calm your fears about it. September 16th is going to happen, okay? Now, when this initially came out, I want to say early 2020, when, when the first idea, the FAA didn't know how to handle unmanned aircraft. They had no idea. So they so they sent out some horrible ideas. Okay, you're going to have to have a prescription to an internet type provider. You're going to have to have internet access access in your air in your airplane. Huh? You're going to have to uh, have a pay a prescription per each airplane. Huh? You're going to have to have an ID per each airplane. Huh? Okay. AMA stepped in and said, it's not feasible. It's not going to happen. Okay, we can't do that. We represent thousands and thousands of people. Your voters. It's not going to happen. Okay. So it went from that, which was going to be horrible, which scared everybody, to you get one. Uh, except, now this, no, I'm going to back up a little bit. Let me back up. Okay. Remember, I'm, <laughs> I'm not that polished. There's three main things you got to remember starting September 16th that you, the recreational pilot, have to remember. Let me back up. Number one, the manufacturers, when they produce drones, and when I say drones, I mean all unmanned aircraft, as of like 2020, 22 or whatever, they have to have the capability or have a remote ID module or chip already in them. The manufacturers, okay? If it's just in, in a lot of the drone companies, a lot of them are already in compliance, okay? Number two, if you are flying at what's called a FRIA, or you know, I think it's called, it's, it's a FRIA, it's an acronym that stands for like an AMA sanctioned uh, site. Uh, um, any of the FRIA, FRIAs are, are designated ad FRIAs. And what that is, that means it's basically an AMA club or some of the other uh, organization clubs that have been recognized by the FFA as a area where remote controlled unmanned aircraft are going to be flying, have already been flying, have been flying there for years and will continue to fly there for years. If you fly at one of these places like the Avon Park Aeromodelers Club where I fly at or um, there's several in this, in this area, Mulberry, the Imperial RC Club, that's AMA sanctioned fields. You fly at a FRIA, then you don't have to do anything. You don't have to even acknowledge it, remote ID. It doesn't concern you anymore. All you have to do is fly like you've always been at these clubs, at these free fields. The AMA has done so much lobbying and so much influence on the F, on the uh, FFA to where, as of just a few days ago, there the FFA is considering letting the AMA dictate who gets the new FRIAs, who's going to you know uh, and govern that which is huge because the AMA is on our side, okay? And they can say, okay, um, Avon Park Aeromodelers Club, um, not only are you a FRIA, which you have been, we're going to let you expand to this area, you know, and we're going to sanction that, and the FA is going to know that, and then your people can fly over here. And it's not, that's just an example, okay? So if you already fly at a FRIA AMA club, and if it's an AMA sanctioned club, I'm 99 point five percent sure that you're already in a free so don't worry about it ask your club president he should be able to tell you for sure or your treasurer or whoever runs your club they should know for sure um but i'm, I'm telling you you're already going to be good so if you're already out of free you ain't gonna worry about it. you ain't got to change anything now number three and this is probably the most important those of you guys who who don't li live hundreds of miles from the nearest club and you can't get to a club you're going to have to have a little module. 
Now, when they first started coming out, they were a couple hundred bucks each. And that's really it's too much. But now, like Tim McKay on his website will show you, they're getting them down to $39. Okay? And even cheaper. And as it becomes a reality on the September 16th, technology, fighting with your competition will drive the chips down, the little modules. And, the, and they, already, they already got them down to weighing just a few ounces, next to nothing. A little you know, home-built foam plane that's, you know, no more than 500 grams, you won't have any problem with it, all right? It'll plug into your receiver or on a Y or whatever, it'll have power, and you're in compliance, and it'll probably like Bluetooth off your phone. A lot of the newer transmitters, you know, like that, already have Bluetooth capabilities, you know, it'll hook to your phone. This becomes your home station, your airplane's flying around, and you'll be able to take that little module that, and you'll be able to put it and move it around from plane to plane to plane. Because initially it was going to be like 10 bucks a month per plane. Initially, back in the early 22. I have over 100 planes. At 5 or 10 bucks a month per plane? That'd kill me. That'd kill my hobby. Okay? I can only have one or two planes at that point. All right? But no, the AMA said, said, no, that's not realistic. These people have five, six, seven hundred planes. They said, okay, just one module, and you can move it from plane to plane. So you'll have one module that has your information that ties it to you, that you register with the FAA, and you're going to take that little beacon transponder, what you want to call it, and you're going to, and you can put it in that plane, you slap it in there with a piece of Velcro, and off you go. Then you fly. And it was going to be, you had to report your flight path, where you're going to fly, when you're going, to, how long you're going to be flying, the area you're going to be flying. You can't go more than 400 feet. You can't go more than this this distance. Blah 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 blah. And they and they and they said no, that's not realistic. And are you going to have the manpower to handle all that? Okay. Basically, it just gets down to fly it or free if you can, and you ain't got nothing to worry about. After September 16th. Okay, and you're not going to be flying at Freya, but you still want to fly your little plane down at the local park or on someone's land and you want to be in compliance, then you'll have to have one little modules and you'll move it from plane to plane. Eventually, it'll be part, you'll, you'll get a new receiver and it'll already be in the receiver. And in your transmitter will get an update and it'll be already in your transmitter. You won't have to worry about it. It will be a no-brainer. Okay, do you actually think that this is going to kill our hobby. It's not. If, it, if they knew, if all them big money, all this money invested in this hobby was going to kill this hobby, you would already see Horizon Hobby shutting down. You'd already see Motion RC shutting down. You'd already see Free Wing and all these companies that make these planes shutting down, and, 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 and they're not. They're still producing brand new planes. They're still doing development research. They're still moving forward. And it's not just going to be at Frias. They know that it's not going to be just for the people at Frias. It's going to be for everybody because the remote ID is not going to be that big of a deal. Okay? And you say, well, I can't fly over 400 feet. Well, if you're flying line of sight plane, I don't care if it's a 15-foot wingspan. If it's 400 feet away, it looks like the head of your thumb, the tip of your thumb. You're not going to be able to tell which way is up or what it's doing anyways. Watch my video on how to tell if you're flying too far away. Okay, so that's not going to be an issue. All right, calm down about the uh, the uh, about obeying remote ID. Okay, calm down about being compliant. It won't be that big of a deal. It's not going to be a huge expense, and it'll be very easy to deal with. Okay, you're going to pay for one little module. Even if it is $200, which was the initial one was proposed, you buy it once and you're done, okay? But it's going to be a lot cheaper. I mean, like I said, on the Tim McKay's site, he's talking about them being $39. He shows one's $39. That's not yet there, but will be. So as competition will drive them prices down, and you only got to have one, okay? I'm not going to drive that point. But that's all the three things. Everything I just said is for people who want to be in compliance. So basically, follow the AMA, be in compliance, you can continue with your hobby. Don't worry about it. Now, for the people who say the heck with remote ID, I'm not going to comply. 
and I'm going to fly down at the public park, and I'm going to fly on my private land, and I'm going to fly over here, and I'm going to fly over there, and I don't care. Okay. I'm not telling you go right ahead and do it, but that's your life, okay? That's your responsibility. But when I tell you what I'm about to tell you, I work in a field that I'm not going to go into what I do for a living or where I work at. You're just going to have to trust me, okay? Because I do not, I, I don't let the two, my, my channel and my work life are two totally different things and I'm going to keep them that way. But when I tell you that I'm in a position of a lot of authority and in a position of a lot of security over a lot, just believe me. Okay, you're just going to have to trust me, and I've been doing this job for 30 years. It's very stressful, okay, and I know what I'm talking about. Just trust me, okay? Whenever a cop has to, and I'm not a cop, but whenever a cop has to arrest somebody, and they have to keep arresting them, that person drew attention to them in some way, shape, or form, Okay. If you're flying your little drone or your little fixed wing aircraft and you're down at the park and you take it and you fly it over on private land and you start videotaping that little girl in her bikini, okay, someone's daughter who's 13 years old and you're filming that with your plane or your drone and this and then mom comes out, this Karen comes out and what the heck are you doing? That's my daughter. Blah, 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 the heck with you lady and blah, blah, blah. Okay, now you're drawing attention to yourself and you're doing something you shouldn't do. Okay. Now that's our present situation. The cop's gonna come. He's either gonna A, give you a warning, or B, he's gonna arrest you for trespassing. And if he gives you a warning, he has to come back. He's gonna be arresting you for trespassing after the fact with, with warning, okay? That's our present situation, okay? If this was to happen after September 16th, now he's got that new memo in his email in a squad car that tells him, um, well, this is however way they're gonna regulate, you know, uh, a infraction or a non-compliance with free whether it's going to be a third degree felony or whether it's going to be a third degree misdemeanor or whatever or a second degree misdemeanor sorry or whatever it's going to be now you've got that also okay if you don't be stupid okay if you're going to go down to the public park follow AMA rules and the now don't fly over people's heads fly away from people you know if people, if it, you're on a soccer field and a, and like I used to do, and a team of people want to come out and play soccer, get off the field because the soccer, the field's going to be used for what it's intended for. You need to go. You fly when they're not there. Fly in the early morning. Fly in the evening. You know, don't draw unwanted attention to yourself. Keep within AMA guidelines. Okay, you're going to be flying on someone's private land that you've got per permission to be there. Go for it, okay? It's going to be treated because the regulation, and there's so much controversy over it already about if an, an only thing they've got on you is a a, a remote ID uh, complaint. There is so much controversy and so much uh, speculative about this. I'm not telling you not to worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you you should be in compliance. But don't draw attention to yourself, okay? Go out there, take your grandson up, fly your little Mustang on the back lot, okay? Have a good time and go home, all right? Um, if, if they have to keep warning you about something, hey, you should, then you know what? They're going to they're gonna put the nails to you, okay? And you were warned. Okay, don't be don't be stupid. You know, don't be defiant. I'm gonna fly my drone over the football game that's being televised. I don't care. Well, enjoy your time in jail. Okay, because you knew you shouldn't and you did anyways. All right. It's gonna be like no. It's gonna be like noise ordinances and stuff. You know, if you draw a bunch of attention to yourself, you're gonna get the the, the hammer put down on you. Okay. Be smart. Be selective. Okay? Don't hurt people. Don't infringe on people's property. Don't trespass. Okay? Honestly, the best thing to do is try to find a field or public or a public area, you know, and then go ahead and spend the money and buy the
freaking ID and put it in your in your plane. It ain't gonna be that big of a deal, okay? Enjoy the hobby, but do, enjoy it the right way. And if you're not gonna do it the right way, don't draw attention to yourself, okay? <laughs> all you do is asking for trouble. Now, that is all the facts and opinions from Fat Guy Flies RC. I don't mean to offend anybody. I'm just telling you, it's gonna happen. Remote ID is real. September 16th, 2023 is coming here. You don't see the big manufacturers slowing down. You don't see the, the buying and selling planes slowing down. Okay? And if anything else, it's ramping up. It ain't going to kill us. It's just a little bump in the road. We'll get through it. Okay? Relax. 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 Enjoy the hobby. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now I have to uh, turn around.